Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas, brothers and sisters. As we look around town, the decorations are gone. In fact, I, I went to the mall not much after Christmas, and Santa and the tree were disappeared. The carols have gone off the air. That special Christmas station on my satellite radio is, well, it quickly turned to New Year's songs. And many of our family and our friends who come to visit, well, they have now gone home. It may not feel like Christmas, really, but in truth it is still Christmas because Epiphany is Christmas. It's the Christmas of the East, the Christmas of the Gentiles, the Christmas of the Magi, those wise men from our Gospel reading today. Now when we use the word epiphany in English outside of every person invited to a party for him and now you, well that really comes to us as a, as a sudden realization, right? The proverbial light bulb that flashes on above your head. It's a fitting illustration, actually. If we think of that light bulb, that idea shining, because the actual Greek word for epiphany is literally to shine upon. And so epiphany, epiphany is a realization. It is a revelation, an appearance that's bathed in light. It's a revelation of Holy Scripture, a revelation in the Word that leads to the Word, the Word made flesh. And it's an appearance in light, the light of the star that shines on the light of the world. It is the mystery of Christ that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. But this mystery of Christ revealed in Epiphany is not that Gentiles are automatically, or, or as the legal folks might say, ipso facto members of the same body. No, just as it's not true for us to say that those who claim to have Abraham as their father are automatically partakers of the body and the promise of Christ. In our many readings of John the Baptist leading up to Christmas, we heard that this is true. Even St. Paul laments that this is so. You see, because it's only through the gospel, through the gospel, through faith in the promised Messiah, the Messiah who was to come, and the Messiah who has come, that both Jew and Gentile alike are made heirs, one in the body of Christ, partakers of the promise of forgiveness, of life, and salvation. So who were these magi who came from the East? Well, they're described in our scripture as as wise men, not wise guys, wise men. It's a description used in Scripture for people who dabbled in astrology, in the interpretation of dreams, in divination and magic. Now, not all such intellectual pursuits of wise men are God-pleasing. In fact, we look to God's Word in Deuteronomy in the 18th chapter, and he says, when you, speaking to the people of Israel, when you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering, anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens, or a sorcerer or charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. 
And yet these men, these magi, they truly are wise men. The magi who saw the star at its rising, his star in the east. And they journeyed to find and worship the king of the Jews. But they didn't follow the star, at least, at least not at first. Instead, they, they took the star as a sign, a sign that it was. And then they went to the place where one would quite reasonably, according to our human wisdom, right, find a newborn king. And that would be the capital city of Jerusalem and the palace of Herod. Now, much to their chagrin, the Christ was not there. And Herod, Herod knew nothing of this star. The Magi had seen the star, but then they followed their own reasonable, wise thinking. Now the irony here is that it was Herod who searched the right place, who turned to the word, the words spoken by the prophet Micah. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Are we not sometimes prone to behave like Herod? No, not in the wickedness, not in the the sort of panic-stricken worry But what is it that Herod had that he had neglected? He had the word. He had the promise. And yet he had set it aside. Put it somewhere in the back. And only when the Magi came did he say, Ah, search them and we'll find the king. Now he had ill intentions. And yet, what is it that happened? It was Herod who secretly called the Magi and imparted to them the word of God, the word that would lead the Magi to the word made flesh. Now the Magi looked to the star and followed the star, followed the light that was shining on the light of the world to that exact location, of the Christ child in the town of Bethlehem. And it's there that they had an epiphany, an epiphany in the fullest and most real sense of the word. The Magi fell down and worshipped Christ. These wise men, these sort of indiscriminate seekers of the truth, saw truth. Truth with a capital T. They saw truth with their own eyes. No truth of the world could ever compare to this truth. And they, by this epiphany, were transformed. Literally, they left, as the Greek says, another way. Literally, they departed another way, a different road that would not take them through Jerusalem or back to Herod. But also, they departed in another way. They departed in a way, in a, in a manner of being that was different somehow than when they had arrived. They were transformed by the Word transformed by the gospel, that good news of forgiveness, of life and salvation in Christ Jesus. The good news that they received, the good news that transformed them, is the good news that you receive. And like the Magi, you have heard the word. The Holy Spirit has called you by the gospel. And like the Magi, You behold Christ with your own eyes. The true body and the most precious blood of Christ Jesus at the altar. And like the Magi, you dear Gentiles are heirs of the kingdom of God. Members of the same body, partakers of the promise 
that is Christ Jesus. And so, brothers and sisters, arise, shine, and depart in another way. Having seen, having heard, having touched, and partaken of the word. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.